Hi everybody, I'm John Holden of Land Designs Unlimited in Newtown, Connecticut, and today I'd like to show you a little bit about what's involved in transplanting a tree. Now behind me you're going to see a blood good Japanese maple, which we're going to transplant today. Now if you look over my shoulder you'll also see behind me is a tool called a Toro Dingo. This is a small front end loader you walk behind, it's got a pair of pallet forks, that's going to be very key in moving this tree today. The first thing you want to do when you're going to transplant a tree or shrub is to do it at the right time of the year. Now the best time of the year to transplant trees and shrubs is going to be either early spring or late summer, early fall. What you want to do is you want to do your transplanting at cooler times of the year when the shrubs and trees are going to have a better chance to get their roots established before the heat comes. Now the other thing you want to do is make sure that when you're going to transplant a tree or a shrub it's been a rainy week before or for the first maybe three or four days before your transplant give your plant so that being said the first step is going to be you're going to dig around the uh, tree roots about a foot foot and a half down make sure you cut them very cleanly whenever you get to them you can use your shovel to cut them but anything bigger than I'm going to say about my finger you really want to do is use a pair of pruners sometimes you'll hit them by accident with the shovel and and cut them with a jagged a jagged cut what you can do is follow up with a pair of pruners and make a nice clean cut just like your skin the cleaner the cut, the quicker it is to heal, the quicker it is to regenerate. So once we get a trench around the tree about a foot deep, we're going to go ahead and start digging underneath until the tree is loose. We're just going to dig very slowly and cut whatever roots there are in the bottom and loosen it up. Then what we'll do is we'll take our pallet forks, slide them under the tree, and before we pick the tree up, we're going to actually tie the tree to the pallet forks to secure them. Uh, if you don't tie it to the pallet forks, sometimes the tree will just fall right over. It'll do a much better job to hold that tree in place, do a better job in moving it. Now, if we were going to transplant this tree to somebody else's property, uh, depending on which tree it is, some trees have more fibrous roots, more stable, but usually what we'll do is go ahead and wrap the roots in burlap, uh, put some string around there to keep it really tight. This tree we're just moving uh, basically from where it is now, about 30 feet away up the hill, so you really don't need to tie the plant roots for a move that short. So why don't we go ahead and get started and I'll try to give you a little bit of narration as we go through. Now this tool right here is called a nursery spade and what it is is it's a spade made out of pure metal so it's got a very strong handle to it, it's got some good heft to it and it's also got a nice, nice sharp edge to it for cutting those roots. Uh, it's got a little bit more mass for digging into the soil there, and it's got the nice sharp edge for digging the roots, so it's a wonderful tool to have for digging trees and shrubs. Uh, if you're a homeowner, perhaps you don't really need one of these. However, if you're in the trade, uh, you really should go online to a company like A.M. Leonard and order one of these. Now, it will cost you anywhere from $80 and up to buy one. Uh, it's well worth the investment because it's going to save you time, and it's going to make this job much more enjoyable as opposed to trying to do it with a spade. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut, start digging around the base of the tree. Uh, just dig straight down. Before I go ahead and actually dig the soil out, what I'm going to do is come through and cut those roots first. There's a root right there, we just cut. So what I'll do is I'll go around and cut the roots first, and then I'll dig the soil around the outside of this tree. Now if you're ever unsure of how far away from the tree to dig, what you can do is go ahead and take a string, wrap it around the base of the tree, and then whatever the distance is around the base of the tree, pull that string out, and that's how far out you need to dig. We're just going to eyeball it today uh, for this tree, and also because our machine can only handle a certain weight, so we'll go ahead and dig it uh, right about here. So let's just keep digging.
don't know if you can see or not, but if you take a look, what I'm doing now is I've gone down about a foot and I'm starting to cut underneath the roots. You're going to kind of go straight down the sides and then start to undercut. Now, as you're digging, you may bump into a larger root like this one here or some smaller roots like this one here. What you can do is if the root is about finger size or smaller, just take a pair of loppers, bring them down there and cut that root. Larger roots, what I'll do is I'll take a pruning saw. I'll be very careful, make sure I clean away all the dirt around the root before I use the pruning saw because once you start cutting dirt with a saw, it's going to get dull very quickly. Clean off the dirt and then just go ahead and do a nice job, a nice clean job cutting that root. And what that's going to do is it's going to let that tree heal much quicker than had you just hacked away at it with something like an axe. Okay, now this one is cut. So this big root, it's cut all the way through. I don't need to, I don't need to cut it twice because once I lift that out of the hole, the rest of it can stay in. Now there's another root down here I'm going to do the same thing with and cut. One other thing I'd like to show you is if you look at the ground here, there's what this is called is marking tape. Now I was fortunate enough the contractor who's taking care of this job let me know that they did bury some electric cables underneath here. So before I started digging today, I did go ahead and cut off the main breaker. However, whenever you're digging, whether it's in the front of the house, wherever, there is every state has a call before you dig number. You really should call that number and have all the utilities marked before you start digging. And then if you do find a wire, anything in the ground, proceed with extreme caution. Uh, this is a 220 volt or 240 volt, I guess, in this part of the country line. If I were to take my steel shovel and jab into that, uh, the repercussions could pretty much end my life right there. Okay, we're getting very close to being done digging this ball out. I've gone down a good 18 inches. I'm starting to undercut the ball. What I'm doing now is I'm just very, very carefully going around the outside of the tree, looking for any large roots on the underside, and, and dig those out. Okay, so I finished undercutting the ball. Once again, there were some roots underneath. Uh, that we're holding the ball together. What I try to do is just tilt the tree one way and feel if there's any resistance. And then wherever I feel resistance, you know there's a root you need to cut. And then once you tilt it one way, tilt it the other way, see if there's any resistance, and then you know where there's some roots you need to cut. The tree is definitely loose now. Let me just show you. The ball's loose. So we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and see if I can dig out a little bit of a ramp here so I can get my dingo down to the ball and see if it's... comforter around the base of the tree to protect the bark and then we took some webbing straps and we strapped the tree to the pallet forks. Now we used webbing as opposed to chains so it doesn't dig into the bark and damage the tree and the comforter is going to give us a little more protection as well. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Now that we've got the tree out of the ground, we'll go ahead and take our loppers and our pruning saw and just make a nice clean cut on all the exposed roots. 
Here's the base of the plant after we planted it. We put a nice well here to go ahead and catch the water when we water it. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and give this, this tree a generous amount of water. And then tomorrow I'm going to come by and put down some mulch to uh, hold that moisture in. Now, the tree is looking really nice. I see no wilting at all, even on this hot day, and we just cut a lot of roots. So I think this tree is going to do absolutely wonderful as long as we keep it watered through the summer. Before we go today, I just want to take a few moments to show you some examples of why it's so important to cut the roots cleanly when you're transplanting trees and shrubs. Now the picture in front of you is a tree that we transplanted and then had to dig up and transplant again about a month later. And when I dug the tree up, I was shocked at what a difference cutting those roots cleanly really made. Now if you look at this picture, you can see this would be where we cut the the root and it's probably about an inch in diameter now all these little white hairs here are actually new roots growing and this is all after I would say four to six weeks tops after we originally transplanted the shrub now the next picture here this is a root that was about a quarter inch in diameter we probably cut it right around here and then all these root hairs are coming out uh, and growing into the soil. Even the small roots, it makes that big a difference. If you cut that root cleanly, it helps it to regenerate new roots that much better. And then this final picture, this would be the outside of the root ball, that big ball we had taken out of the ground, and you can see where there's new roots coming out of that dirt and growing into the soil. Thank you for watching our video of transplanting this blood good Japanese maple today. For more information about our services, please visit our website at www.landdesigns.com, our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash land designs,